Hi all, in this video we will derive Poiseuille's law for a cylindrical tube because in most biological systems the uh, vessels that carry blood and whatnot or water and nutrients or whatever will be cylindrical. So uh, in either the notes or a previous video you saw a derivation for the velocity profile in a cylindrical tube. So we are going to have cylindrical tube like this that will have a radius big R and then there is going to be a pressure on uh, this face it's going to be P1 and there's going to be a pressure that is on this other face that will be P2 and the idea here is we're going to take little cylindrical shells so we're going to take something like this it's really thin uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to use the velocity profile at that distance out r. So there's the center. We go out a distance little r. So we're going to have the velocity profile at that r times time. So this is going to give us uh, velocity times time is just going to give us a distance. And then we're also going to multiply this by 2 pi r dr so this is sort of just the circumference and then this is the thickness so that we end up getting a volume so this ends up giving us the volume for a cylindrical shell and what we want to do is we want to add these all up so the way that you add everything up is you integrate this from zero to big r so from no radius up to the large radius and this will give us the total flow rate q times delta t because this is a volume flow rate so this is you know, volume per time if you multiply by a time delta t then you'll just get a volume so what we can do now is first see that on both sides we're going to have a delta t so we can just cross that out and then we'll do this integral so what we need to do is we need to input for v the velocity profile in the z direction where this is the z direction um, for different r. So the actual uh, derivation of this v of z of r is something you can look in the notes or uh, in another video. Um, we're just going to use that result right now. So we're going to do from 0 to r of um, P1 minus P2 all over 4 times the length of the tube times eta. So we're going to have this tube is a length, has a length L, and it has a viscosity, the fluid flowing in it has a viscosity eta. And then this will be multiplied by big R squared minus little r squared and then we have the R dr and we also have a 2 pi just because of this right here that's going to be equal to our volume flow rate Q so we can pull out everything that's a constant so we'll get 2 pi P1 minus P2 all over 4L eta. And then we're going from 0 to R of R squared minus little r squared R dr, and that's equal to Q. And uh, now all we have to do is multiply in this R. So we'll get pi over P1 minus P2 all over 2L 
eta 0 to r of big R squared R minus R cubed all of that dr equal to q. And then what we can do is we can come up here and we can uh, continue the integral. So, so this is now going to be pi over p1 minus p2 all over 2L eta, and then we integrate this. So this is just a constant times r. So you add one and divide by the new power, so it's going to be big R squared, little r squared, all over 2, minus add one divide by the new power, little r to the fourth, or 4, 0 to big R. So now we just put in our limits. When we put in zero, we're just gonna get zero to the fourth and zero squared, so we're not gonna write that one down because it's just going to be zero. So this is P1 minus P2 over two L eta. And this is going to be big R to squared times big R squared because you put in the R here, so you get a two. And then this is big R to the fourth all over four. That's going to be equal to Q. And then what we can see, this is R, big R squared times big R squared. We can just rewrite this as big R to the fourth. And then we can do two over four because that's still one half. And then what we end up getting So this is going to be just two minus one. So we get pi P one minus P two all over two L eta R to the fourth over four equal to Q. And then what we can do is we can rewrite this and do a little bit of talking. So four times two is eight. So what we can do is we can do um, pi r to the fourth all over eight L eta P one minus P two. That's going to be equal to Q. So this is Poiseuille's law that the pressure difference across a segment of pipe is going to be equal to, so this is pressure difference. This is volume flow rate. So really what Poiseuille's law is, is it's saying the conductance, which is right here, So the conductance is a measure of how hard or easy it is to flow through a pipe, that it's drastically dependent on the radius. So some people say exponentially, this is an exponential, this is to the fourth, but still, this is going as the radius to the fourth, which is, you know, larger, is even more drastic than a volume. So volume goes as r cubed, this is going as r to the fourth. So what we see is if you change the radius just a little bit, you're going to have a large effect. So the difference between one to the fourth and two to the fourth is 15. So one to the fourth is still one, two to the fourth is 16, which is quite large.
and uh, we'll also notice that the conductance is just related to geometrical factors, so the radius of the pipe, the length of the pipe, and then also fluid parameters, so uh, the viscosity of the pipe. So the conductance times the pressure is going to equal the volume flow rate, and for Poiseuille's law, it's going to be drastically dependent on the cross-section, so uh, the radius, and it's weakly dependent on the length. All right, thank you.